Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Jay and welcome to the channel and welcome to October Lake and Planet Zoo, a series where we're working on building this really large park situated in the Canadian Highlands. In today's episode, we are going to be diving into the new Southeast Asian DLC with the inclusion of a pair of snow leopards. If that does sound good to you and if you do like today's video, please do consider giving the video a like and of course do subscribe for more Planet Zoo content. I upload every Wednesday at 5pm UK time. Now just to uh, quickly say a few things before we get started in this episode, just want to say the animals in this pack, stunning and uh, just quickly I want to say thank you so much to Frontier for giving me a key to the, uh, to the DLC. It means so much that they uh, have given me that and just let me showcase it for you guys. So that's uh, just something really cool that they did and I'm, I just want to say thanks to them. Because they've also done just a tremendous job on this pack and I cannot say enough good things about it. This is, I gotta say, every time there's a new pack that they put out, I gotta say they, they just do better each time. They improve and they do better and like the animal quality is always just on point and I could talk about it for ages and I will. But not right now. <laughs> right now, I'm going to talk about why this specific pack um, is one that I've been excited for for such a long time. And honestly, I've been excited for it since before I knew the pack was even coming out. And there's a reason for that. And that is because I am, well, Southeast Asian. I was born in Malaysia. I lived there pretty much my whole life until I moved to the UK for university, which is where I am now. But um, yeah, it's just... It's great to see so many of these animals that I know very intimately from my experiences seeing them like just quite regularly, not even just in zoos but in the wild in some cases. Like I'm very used to seeing Malayan tapirs in zoos and you know like wildlife uh, reserves and stuff like that. For bosses monkeys I've seen so many in the wild and just because I used to go over to uh, East Malaysia which is in Borneo and there's just proboscis monkeys in so many of the the river and nature reserve kind of areas that I used to frequent. There's just so many of these animals that I really have a quite intimate connection with and even with the uh, the sun bear like I mentioned in a previous video I was interning with a documentary company earlier last year um, right before the pandemic started and I had this amazing opportunity to actually go into an enclosure with a sun bear to film it at this um wildlife rehabilitation center which was just an incredible experience and seeing these animals here in the game and being able to build habitats for them and see them really brought to life in such a realistic way is genuinely just so nice and even when they did kind of like falter a little bit like with the i'm sure if you've followed any of the planet zoo news you will have noticed they changed up the binturong design now binturongs are super unique fascinating animals and they got such a unique appearance to them and I think when they first showcased the Binturong design people were a little bit disappointed because it looked a bit um, say too polished or too um, like round and kind of not fully like what a Binturong would look like in real life and Frontier being as amazing as they are as developers they just they listened to the the criticism and they changed it now the Binturong looks spectacular and will make habitat for it not long from now it just goes to show that they really do put a lot of care into these animals and when they do miss the mark they listen and they they really update what they're doing which is just so good very pleased about that but yeah this the animals in this game so excited of course this is a very different pack from usual we don't have a building set that comes with it we do have a few enrichment items and stuff like that but nothing um no like big building sets like we did in the previous packs which is understandable because we are getting more animals and i quite like the the variation in dlcs like this if you ask me what i would prefer i think as we go forward it'd be nice to have like different um uh, like different dlcs each time like maybe have one be an animal pack and then the next one be an animal pack with buildings but like fewer animals so maybe like an just alternating them like that would be pretty good so i'm quite i'm quite excited to to see uh, what they put out next but oh my god this pack easily my favorite like I think looking back at all the DLCs like if I was to rank them I think they would just go from best like to like from my most favorite to least favorite would just be going back in time like my most favorite being this one then followed by the aquatic pack followed by the Australia pack then the South American pack and finally the Arctic pack 
because each time they just improve and add more stuff that we've all been looking for uh, the animal quality is always top notch just genuinely each time I'm always so pleased and yeah they just really improve each time and I gotta say Southeast Asia pack has been my favorite so far would thoroughly recommend it and once again just want to say a big thank you to Frontier again for providing me with the key so that I can showcase it but again all opinions are of course my own and you know how much I love it you can hear it in my voice you can just ah, I am so pleased it just, I cannot express it enough with all of my, um, you know, like, gushing about us out of the way, let's talk about the actual build today. So, like I said, we're going to be including the Clouded Leopard in October Lake. Uh, I actually only got a hold of the DLC yesterday, so I've just been building, like, all night. And it was a lot of fun to build this. I think it was a total of maybe a three-hour three hour build or so. And it was, the idea for it is to have a multi-layered habitat that's kind of going down this hill. We have different kind of staggered... Uh, plateaus almost where the there's some flat ground and then there'll be like wooden kind of climbing areas because these uh, clouded leopard is one of the most horrible real cats there is on the planet they they spend so much of their time climbing they're extremely good climbers they can actually um climb up and down a tree almost at like a 90 degree you know angle it's kind of crazy uh, on screen, I briefly got distracted by the new statues, by the way, which are really nice. I like the new statues, and I'll definitely go into more of the scenarios to unlock the rest of them. That's something I really like, by the way, is a lot of the stuff in the free update is so good. It's just like, you know, a little bit of quality of life stuff, which um, I think I'm going to make a separate, just like a filler video between episodes of October Lake, where we go in and add in some of the new kind of infrastructure elements we got with the free update, like the new billboards and stuff like that. And of course, I really like some of the new um, enrichment items we got with these animals. The, we got some scratching trees and stuff like that. And of course, the hammock it looks so good. But yeah, talking about this habitat, again, as you can see, I'm using the, the four rocks to kind of layer out where the different height, uh, the different elevation kind of stops are so that we can then uh, kind of figure out how to use that to our advantage and where to lay out the climbing structures and stuff like that. And I think it looks pretty good. There's going to be like some stairs on the side for guests to be viewing uh, the clouded leopard from. There's going to be multiple stops where they can stop while walking down and have a look. And next to it there is a ramp, but um, I'm going to have to like change that up a bit just because it is so steep right now. And that's going to be quite, quite difficult, I think, because it is, you get, it's so steep. I don't know how I'm going to actually change that, but I'll figure something out. I'm sure it'll be fine. But yeah, this um, this habitat I think was quite a fun build. Again, it was a bit challenging because the the elevation being so weird. It's a much more long, narrow habitat than it is a like a wide open one, which I think suits the the animal a lot more. One interesting thing uh, about these these clouded leopards, which I didn't actually realize, I've seen them a few times in real life in Singapore Zoo and stuff like that, but I always forget that they're actually pretty tiny tiny animals. They're not very big at all, like especially for a cat. Like males only get up to about a meter in length and they weigh about 20 kilograms which is really not an awful lot at all so at, later when you see them in their habitat it's actually a pretty big habitat for them and that's uh, quite a good thing in my book I think it, that was quite a nice thing to see that they have all this space and they can really make use of it. Yeah I'm starting work on the climbing platforms and there'll be quite a few of these throughout the habitat. But while I'm doing that, how's about we talk a little bit about the snow leopards? Uh, sorry, the clouded leopards, not snow leopards. I will probably accidentally call them snow leopards here and there just because we literally... This is literally next to the snow leopard habitat, but they are clouded leopards. So let's talk a little bit about the clouded leopards because they are really, really cool animals. They are kind of like scattered across most of Southeast Asia in like smaller population pockets. They're not... Um, they're not doing the greatest, they're vulnerable according to the IUC and Red List, and none of their individual populations really have more than a thousand uh, adults. Total people think maybe about 10,000 um, individuals overall, but it's not um, entirely certain. They are very uh, reclusive animals, they're hard to spot, they're very like, they hide in deep forests and they only really are active in like primarily nocturnally but they do come down like from trees at night to like i said they're nocturnal essentially they go into trees at night to hide wait what am i saying 
Oh my god, sorry. No, they go into trees during the day to hide and rest, and then at night they come down to the forest floor to hunt. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> sorry, I just had like a little brain fart there. But yeah, they're, they're really fascinating. Uh, as far as their relation to other big cats go, they're actually quite distantly related to other big cats. Uh, somewhere about like 15 million years ago or something like that, they actually diverged from the other Panthera species. So Panthera including, sorry, the Panthera genus, which includes stuff like, you know, tigers, lions, etc. But um, the clouded leopards actually split off from them quite a while ago to form the genus Neophilus. And they are specifically, the clouded leopard is Neophilus nebulosa, which is a really cool scientific name, just saying, <laughs> it's pretty cool. But like I said, uh, scattered quite a bit across Southeast Asia, they even range up into the Himalayas a little bit. Uh, there's some isolated populations in Malaysia and there's another species of clouded leopard in Borneo which is known as the, the Sunda clouded leopard. That's slightly different. You find them primarily on Borneo and a little bit on the uh, island of Indonesia known as Sumatra. So those are a little bit more isolated, smaller pockets and um, generally not too, as closely related to the ones on the mainland as you might expect. but they're still pretty similar. As you can tell, they're, they're really unique looking cats. Their coloration is beautiful. Like, they probably got my favorite coloration of any big cat. They're called cloud leopards because they do have like a clouded kind of pattern. It's like, it's like this kind of the splotches on a leopard if you kind of blew them up really big and then blurred them out like a, like a watercolor. It's beautiful and so, so uh, just unique and gorgeous and in the game they actually have quite a few different color variations that I've seen. They have ochre fur, yellow fur, grey fur, which is all colors you will see in clouded leopards in the wild. So I'm very very pleased that they included so many different variations and they look really good in the game as well. I think they really put in a lot of effort and they made them look so good. <laughs> um, as far as in real life go, uh, what? What was that statement? I'm sorry, I'm really not on it today, but like in real life, they are also really unique amongst other cats because they have the largest canine teeth amongst all big cats in proportion to their body, which is crazy. A lot of people have called them kind of like the modern saber tooth, so to speak. And they can actually open up their mouth really wide, which is it's really quite crazy. If you look up pictures of them doing it, they, they open it like insanely wide. It's crazy. As far as your behavior goes, these guys are primarily solitary, like I said, nocturnal, spend a lot of time in the trees, and they're very, very like reclusive and elusive. You don't see them very much. It's hard to track them down. But like I said, they're very arboreal. They spend so much time in the trees. They, they can jump extremely long distances. And you may have noticed they actually have a very long, very thick tail. And that's what they use to actually balance themselves while they're climbing and while they're running and stuff, which is really cool. And as a, like a smaller cat as well, one cool thing is they can purr like a, like a small house cat, which is so cute. Um, as far as what they hunt goes, it just other smaller kind of smaller mammals, you know, like macaques are a big, a big, um, a big source of food for them. Some smaller deer, you know, just small mammals like porcupine. Apparently, uh, like in Malaysia itself, there have been a, there's a photograph captured of a clouded leopard actually carrying um, a dead binturong. Which is very interesting, and um, of course we will be introducing the Binturong in a few um, few episodes time, which is probably not going to be anywhere near the clouded leopard. <laughs> in the next episode, I think we're going to include the sun bear. By the way, just saying because we are going to be including a lot of bears. Well, not a lot of bears, but we are going to be including bears in this park, so might as well do the sun bear as well. Now, um, it's, uh, that's pretty much it for the the clouded leopards. And talking about them, they are just such cool animals and I'm really pleased to be talking about them and learning about them as I go along. As you can see on screen, uh, what we've been doing is just finishing up the habitat itself, using a lot of bamboo I think to kind of bridge that gap between a tropical montane forest and more of temperate or taiga forest and I think it looks really quite uh, effective in kind of creating a pseudo tropical environment. I think it works pretty well. Here we're making just some uh, viewing areas. These are not going to be uh, fit, like furnished on the inside just yet. I want to do that kind of off screen. I'll just put in some benches and some new screens and stuff like that. 
and with the new screens in the update the ones that we can do, the custom billboards and stuff i really am quite keen to uh like just explore that idea a bit and maybe put in some videos of our clouded leopards doing stuff that could be pretty cool there's just a lot of like opportunities i think to really include a lot of different graphic designs and stuff like that to really flesh it out make october lake like kind of like more unique, I guess, and everyone can, that's one of the great things about this update is everyone can really make their zoos more individual and more like their own zoos, which is very cool, I think. After this, uh, this interior area is finished, we're going to spend a little bit of time just doing up the uh, exterior viewing areas as well, but nothing too, too fancy here. We're going to try and use a little bit more foliage on top of the roofs as well to create like a, like an overgrown kind of ivy creeper kind of effect so looking forward to that as well i think that was a pretty fun fun little thing to do uh overall yeah one thing i've had an issue with while building this um this whole build in general was that i don't know what's been going on with my game i think it might just be because october lake is getting quite big uh i've had a lot of issues essentially getting like with frame rate but not really frame rate i don't know how to describe it so essentially what's been going on is the game would run fine for ages with like full 60 fps everything's great you know it works perfectly fine and then out of nowhere it'll just like stop and then drop to like 10 fps or something like that or 20 fps and then it would stutter for quite a bit and i'd have to wait like a good 10 minutes and then it'll kind of clear up and i'm not sure what's causing it I've been trying to figure it out and like change things up a little bit here and there. It's been happening ever since the seal episode. I'm thinking it might just be because October Lake is getting quite big and has a lot of guests in it. So it might take up a lot of processing power, but yeah, I'm not 100% sure. Here's the, uh, the one of the new screens, by the way. And I was just playing around with it to see what we could do with it and one of the new signs. But I think it looks really nice. And what I want to do is actually film the, the, snow, uh, sorry, the clouded leopards in the game. Uh, just doing their stuff and then I'll put the video up here so that people can kind of see like maybe like have it be almost like a live cam of what's going on inside because a lot of zoos do that like in fact I do recommend checking out zoo live cams they're so fun I will if you look up the Highland Wildlife Park you can watch the uh, Japanese macaques just hang out and play around like live at any time of the day which is a lot of fun I believe Edinburgh Zoo does something similar with their penguins as well but I'm not 100% sure but those are always fun so I kind of want to get that vibe and maybe, I don't know, just the, the new custom billboard really award us with so many opportunities to do some really quite fun stuff, I think. And I'm looking forward to really exploring that. One of the things I've heard people doing is making aquariums, which is like so creative. And I saw someone left that suggestion on one of my videos as well to make an aquarium using these, these new custom screens. And I think it's doable. We have to like maybe... Um, like tweak it a little bit like tweak the video so that you have that illusion of depth but if it works you know why not give it a shot i guess so that could be something fun we could include like a little aquarium at the bottom of the you know the underwater area where the seals when the underwater viewing area for the seals that could be a lot of uh, fun i think could be a very unique look at uh, that could just could be a very unique thing i think i think some other people have tried it on youtube so far uh, with mixed results some of them have been really good some of them have been a little bit harder to pull off convincingly because again of that depth issue but god i'm excited to try it out <laughs> this is a lot of uh, stuff in this update i am quite excited to try out one of the things i really want to play with is the coloration of the water that you can do now i did do it a little bit for this bottom pool here just to make it look a bit muddier because i imagine it would be since it's such a small pool there and there's lots of rocks and stuff i imagine it would be muddy and at the bottom of a hill you know stuff's gonna get kicked in so I think it looked really good, especially when I did that later. And I tried it off screen a little bit with the crocodile habitat, try like brackish water and stuff. And the, I didn't realize like how much control we really get. We can do so much with the, the coloration of the water. It's quite crazy. So we'll see how it goes. I, I would like to play around with it more and maybe change up the water color for some of the different habitats. Um, especially like the aquatic ones, like the penguin habitat and the seal habitat. Maybe we could change it a bit too. Maybe differentiate it from the water in the lake as well. Or maybe I'll change the color of the lake as a whole because October Lake is is its own thing, you know. It might as well change it up so it looks more like a lake. But I mean, the color is already so good, so quite excited to see um 
see what we can do with that. Anyway, so we are coming up to the tail end of the video now, only a few more minutes to go. So, just want to talk about a little bit about the, the plans for the future here. Uh, by the way, what we're doing on screen is just finishing up the canopies for the viewing areas here. But just a plan for the channel as we go forward through this pack. I want to, first off, use a few of the animals here in October Lake. So, the ones I'm thinking are, of course, the Cloud Leopard like we've done today. The Sun Bear, I think, for sure. I'm thinking probably the Binturong. There's a couple others which I'm a little bit more iffy about. I could do the Barbie Wolf, I think. It's a very cool animal. The Usuri doll would be pretty cool because I am including a wolf, like the Grey Wolf later on. Some an another Canid would be a nice addition, I think. But then for the rest of them, I think what we're gonna do is actually go back into my previous park build, Sanikov Land, because that's an ongoing project as well, and continue working there uh, with the rest of the animals from this pack. And hopefully this time I'll actually do them in a relatively uh, reasonable amount of time and not like with the grey seal where I waited four months to use it even though it was like it's such a great animal too like that's the thing it's just because there's so much to do in this game and like building habitats and you get stuck in and it's so fun and then you just forget and then you're like oh I've meant to like make a habitat for this animal months ago so hopefully that doesn't happen this time but I don't think it will considering how great these animals are I mean, the seal is also just great, but I forgot about it anyway somehow because... Well, I didn't forget about it. I did, No, I totally forgot about it. What am I talking about? It's just there's so many animals in the game now. I also had a really fun idea for a video, which I think I'm going to make, uh, where I just kind of like look through all the different animals in Planet Zoo and talk about them. So I'll do that at some point as well, and I think that will be a lot of fun. Though there are 103 animals now total, which is... A lot, that's a lot of animals, so yeah, we'll, we'll see how that goes. Anyways, we are we are coming up to the end of the video now. I just want to say thanks so much for watching. Thanks for all your support on the channel. We are almost at 1,500 subscribers, which is incredible. I don't know how that's happened, but thank you so much. Big thanks again to Frontier for providing me with the key for uh, the South America, uh, sorry, the Southeast Asia pack. Uh, and... Um, yeah, look forward to more videos about the pack. I think I'm going to also do one of the time scenarios on the channel. We'll see how that goes. The last one I tried was for the uh, Australia pack and that was a disaster, but it was kind of fun. So we'll see how it goes. I've said we'll see how it goes many times. Many times, probably too many times. <laughs> Anyways, that is it for today. I just want to say again, thanks for watching everyone. Uh, if you do like the video, please do give it a like. If you uh, got anything, let me know. Let me know in the comments. Request future animal builds. Tell me what your favorite part of the pack is so far. Have you got your hands on it? What do you think? Let me know all down below. Uh, subscribe for more Planet Zoo content. Again, every Wednesday at 5 p.m. UK time, there will be a new Planet Zoo video. And this week, we might even have more on odd days just because I want to play the time scenario and stuff. With all that being said, thanks again for watching. And I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.